Welcome to Spotlight Documentaries, our series on young leaders and coalitions of the White House Drug-Free Communities Program. We're here today with Sophia Ferrero. Sophia, you are one of the members of CADCA's National Youth Advisory Council and have been instrumental in several of their projects focusing on prevention measures. So thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so what inspired you to become a youth leader in the fight against addiction in the drug epidemic? Um, my fight against drug misuse and everything has really stemmed from my family and my own personal experience. Um, I have known many people in my immediate uh, family who have suffered from drug misuse and drug addiction and seeing them go through and seeing them recover from that more so has really inspired me to help bring positive change, not only to my family, but to my community as a whole. And can you tell us more about the CADCA's National Youth Advisory Council and what you do? Of course. So CADCA's National Youth Advisory Council, or ENYAC for short, um, was founded a little bit after the pandemic. Um, I'm sorry, a little bit after the beginning of the pandemic, around like 2021-ish, when um, many people and many leaders in CADCA's kind of company realized that there wasn't a lot of youth representation in drug misuse prevention. So they kind of created the National Youth Advisory Council as a way for youth advocates to speak on issues about drug misuse and what they see in their communities regarding youth drug misuse. So we've worked with different um, sponsors like Snapchat. We've worked with, um, excuse me, I'm totally blanking, <laughs> SAMHSA, HOSA, um, and a bunch of other uh, youth-led organizations and community organizations to kind of work together and bring a youth perspective on a lot of the drug misuse prevention that CADCA does and a lot of work they do. It's a very noble cause. And you are also the president of the Levittown uh, L Youth Program. Um, can you share with us some personal stories where you felt like you had an impact on the students in your community regarding drug prevention or recovery? Of course. So with uh, Levittown's L Youth or Levittown Young Organizers United Help, um, we kind of were created during the pandemic where myself and a few of my peers and classmates noticed that a lot of people were turning to drugs and alcohol misuse to kind of cope with the stresses of high school, of the political world, of everything, especially the pandemic with um, all that. So we kind of created us, uh, ourselves as like a positive way for community members to get together and for youth to talk about drug misuse. I do think my most profound moment working with L Youth and being the president of L Youth though, was at, we had a town hall meeting where we worked with alongside um, a community church. And then we had food trucks that came, we had speakers, we had politicians come over and just seeing everyone in the community, seeing my friends, seeing you know kids that are younger than me, kids that are older than me, all kind of together under the same cause of just drug prevention and wanting to create a better community. That was just so inspiring for me who kind of started it from Zoom meetings on the pandemic to actually seeing it grow into the, such a big community event that intersected so many aspects of Levittown. Like, That's wonderful. And what steps do you think students, middle or high school, can take to avoid falling prey to drugs? I think the biggest step that any youth could take to kind of avoid it is kind of, I think, firstly, understanding. Understanding that the vast majority of students do not partake in drug misuse. Um, and there's a lot of times we show like very scary percentages of the amount of students that use, but in reality, it's quite uncommon to have students who use. So to kind of understand like you don't have to do it to fit in or you don't have to partake in such negative kind of behaviors. And by also understanding that even if you have seen it a lot and it's very common in your community specifically, just it's not something that you need for your mental health and for your kind of brain <laughs> um, for your whole environment. So I think just students understanding that like they don't need that to have fun. They don't need that to really cope or anything like that. They just need to kind of be themselves and to find other better ways of dealing with the stresses other than that. That makes sense. I'm sorry if I'm rambling. <laughs> no, that, that makes sense. That's a great answer. And <laughs> what are some top strategies when you talk to someone uh, your peers who you might suspect have an issue with drugs? Um, I guess what I was saying earlier, I think the biggest step you can take is understanding. Um, I feel like that's just a very key component in anything from drug misuse to just the day-to-day -day life that a person should live is understanding. So I think when a person who, who 
I may suspect or others may suspect is using. I think understanding that we should not judge a person based on their, you know, those decisions because addiction in reality is a disease. Um, and more so just by being non-judgmental and coming at them a place of, let me understand what you're going through. Let me understand the choices you're making that make you feel like you need to use certain drugs and certain alcohol. Um, so I think that's the biggest like step is just coming from a place of, I'm here to understand you. I'm not here to judge you and I'm not here to criticize you. I'm here to help. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. And how can we spotlight and celebrate the students that do choose to stay clean and encourage them to become leaders uh, like a positive reinforcement? Um, I think the biggest way we can do that is through just by highlighting and using positive reinforcement. Um, I think a lot of times we see online, in the news, we see a lot of negative. We see youth getting arrested. We see youth that are overdosing. And I think by in our media, whether that's local news stations or social media sites, by highlighting students that are working to end drug misuse or that are working with bigger corporations or they're simply doing good in their community by doing community service. I think by constantly highlighting that as opposed to the negative side of a lot of things, I think that it would be a really positive reinforcement for kids to be encouraged to do positive things, whether they want to do community service or whether they want to, you know, do a different track. I think that's important just to show like, hey, there's others like you who want to do good in the world. And so recently we're hearing a lot more about the fentanyl crisis and are we doing anything differently to step up to the fight of the current fentanyl crisis? I think that we're doing a lot of things differently. I think when you look back on drug prevention as kind of a whole, you look back on like the Just Say No campaign and the old commercials where it's like, this is your brain with the egg and this is your brain on drugs with the fried egg. Um, I think coming at it now in 2020, 2021 through today, I think seeing the amount of youth advocates that are in panel, that are in the conversation, that are physically present at conferences and forums, by them being there, I think it's much easier for drug prevention specialists to adapt with what a lot of the students and a lot of the kids are using nowadays. So I think that's one of the biggest, biggest kind of stepping stones that the drug prevention field has as a whole in preventing fentanyl crisis. And what do you feel like is one of the biggest obstacles in the fight uh, against fentanyl um, and how can we overcome it? Um, I think the biggest obstacle when it comes to fentanyl is just how small of a kind of amount that you need and how common it's becoming. Um, in Levittown, we had a big like fake pill campaign where we talked about like real versus fake pills. And what a lot of people wasn't, weren't understanding that it wasn't like just a fake pill. It was just you're getting baby aspirin and fentanyl in a lot of this stuff. So I think when the biggest obstacle is people understanding like, when they're buying these street drugs, you're not getting the street drugs and that you're, you truly have no idea what you're getting. And then I think more so how I was talking about earlier with the youth advocates, I still don't think it's enough, especially for youth, because youth, as we know, are just adapting every day with Snapchat, with certain lingo and jargon surrounding drug misuse that I think it's like you take one step, they're taking two. So I think with us as youth, we need to really advocate on the side of drug preventionists and being aware of what our peers are doing, what our friends are doing, um, what other youth in the community are doing to kind of stop it before it starts instead of letting it get out of hand like it is now. So what are some things that all of us in the community can do to stop the fentanyl crisis? I think the biggest thing that we can do as a community is kind of look at people who suffer from substance use disorders or students or youth rather who we feel are at risk of having disorders and kind of coming to them with a place of let me help you instead of just automatically shunning them or ostracizing them saying oh they're just a bad kid um, or oh they're just a bad person kind of going to them and saying hey I think you're hurting hey I think you know you may be going through something and also maybe displaying the resources that are available to the community a lot of people young or old or whatever they are don't realize the amount of resources a community has to help so i think by the community kind of recognizing the resources they have 
and going to the people they feel are most vulnerable or most at risk and coming to them to help instead of shutting them away. I think that's the biggest way that they can really help. And what are your future plans in terms of college career and your work in drug prevention? Um, I definitely see myself continuing my work in drug prevention. I honestly have never felt so satisfied emotionally and worth work ethic wise than working with CADCA. They truly are an amazing organization that uplifts everyone that they reach. So I definitely see myself continuing with that. Um, in terms of college though, I will probably be doing like some sort of pre-law program. I'm attending the University of Central Florida in the fall. Um, Major is undecided, but I definitely see myself wanting to continue to help and wanting to continue to be the change, um, not only in the drug prevention community, but in the mental health community as well, because that's something I'm also very passionate about. So I definitely see myself doing that. Well, thank you so much, Sophia, for your time today. Of course. Thank you for having me. No problem.